Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and I'm here to tell you everything that's happening here in and around Missoula for in the next couple days. Um, if you haven't already noticed that the weather is kind of looking a little bit nicer, but uh, expect areas of smoke to be coming in into Missoula throughout this weekend. Um, you have a fair 59 degrees outside currently. It's going to be as high as 88 degrees. There's going to be some area smoke with isolated thunderstorms. Hopefully some of those thunderstorms will bring some rain, maybe get rid of some of the, um, help some of the firefighters in the season. But hopefully the thunderstorms won't cause any more fires that's happening. Um, tonight you can expect area smoke to uh, fill the air with lows into the 54. Um, Thursday you still have more of that smoke going on pretty much all week long. Um, but your highs are going to be into the 80s and your lows are going to be into the 50s. So it's not going to be too hot, but you may want to avoid going outside too long as well. I'm going to go look up your Missoula air quality real quick. Air quality. So currently the Missoula air quality, if you just go to uh, um, their website, it's svc.mt.gov. It's the Department of um, Environmental Quality and they have these uh, assessments on here. So if you look at this, you see a map of all the area. So as you can see in this um, region up here, Sealy Lake is having hazardous area for your air quality. Right here, Frenchtown is uh, unhealthy for sensitive groups, but uh, pretty much everything's staying fairly moderate here in Missoula, uh, even though there are basically two fires coming up from the north areas and also Lolo Peak areas, but it's not affecting Missoula too badly but if we look at a map of the Missoula, it kind of gives out a kind of scope of the area. And this is the current situation. And if we do look at yesterday, you can go to the previous day, and it kind of gives you a map of what to expect. And this has been fairly consistent in terms of um, your your uh, smoke, your, um, le your smoke levels, the standards of what is, you know, all right to basically go outside but it looks like it's going to be fairly moderate and it will probably be continuing to be moderate throughout the uh, week of the fair and i'm going to be talking a little bit more about the fair uh, later on in the show but let's uh switch on gears and go on over to news missoula fresh market said an employee accused of discriminating against a native american couple um in a video which had uh, viewed over a hundred thousand times since saturday um no longer works for Missoula Fresh Market. Basically what happened was a Native American couple went into the Fresh Market and was being watched closely by an unnamed employee. Um, when the two d decided to uh, stream their confrontation with the employee, so they went to confront the employee and be like, hey, uh, why are you uh, fo following us around? Why are you staring at us? That kind of thing. And so um, this is basically the employee was caught saying this, oh my gosh, why is it always Native Americans? Oh, why do you get got to profile us? Every Native American that comes in here says that you're just like the rest of them. And that's what the employee said, amongst other things. The whole video is that it is available if you actually go to Missoula.com, but you can also find it on YouTube and many other social media outlets for this particular story. So Missoula Fresh Market co-owner uh, Craig Holstet uh, said Tuesday the employee in the video no longer works at the store. He said that the company also told Madman and Oldman um, that they were not banned from shopping there. So Madman and Oldman were... Um, were under the impression that uh, Missoula Fresh Market employees banned them from being there with the video and all that stuff as well. So um, basically said that, okay, the employee's gone. You don't have to worry about this right now. So in the state, um, switching gears, uh, the state of Montana launched a new website where the public can report blooms of suspected toxic algae. Um, harmful algae blooms, HABs, are a seasonal phenomenon in the Montana lakes, reservoirs, and ponds that can make people sick and even kill pets and livestock. The Montana Department of Public Health and Human Services and the Montana Department of Environmental Ecology, Equality um, are asking for the public help with the identifying um, suspected HAB sites. On Friday, the two agencies launched a HAB r reported website. It's called www w.hab.mt.gov. So basically, let me go to that website real quick. And it kind of gives you uh, what to look for, what to see, and they give uh, representation pictures of what the harmful algae looks like. So um, here are some of the uh, examples. Um, you can kind of see in th these small, really small pictures, and you can report some algae as well just by going to that website. 
Hold on a second. Sorry, I went to the report thing. But yeah, you, you just have to go to the website. Um, if you see any suspected algae, if they kind of seem like they're kind of off color or, you know, like the the lake is just kind of seeming a little uh, peculiar, then you can always report it to um, ha, um, hab.mt.gov. So moving on, in addition to the reporting basics, such as time and the date of the algae bloom and observation, the website allows users to upload photos of the bloom and pinpoint the GPS locations. The site also includes the phone number for poison control, which should be called immediately if an HAB related illness is suspected uh, in a person or an animal. Um, but of course, uh, in 2014, uh, HAB in Lake Erie um, in uh, Toledo, Idaho, um, basically uh, left nearly half a million residents in I Ohio with access to, without access to the public water supply for nearly three days in the fall of 2015. The HAB covered 636 miles of the Ohio River, producing a toxin that killed cattle. Um, nationally. Uh, this issue has gotten so much attention, said Eric Urban, DEQ Water, Water Quality Planning Bureau Chief. In Montana, uh, Halb, uh, Halbgen Lake Reservoir has confirmed HAB last summer that lasted in October with an alarming levels of toxins. And this is what uh, Eric Urban from DEQ Water Quality said. So just be aware that um, if you suspected algae or if you notice that maybe your dogs or your pets are getting sick from basically going in the pool and there's something might be wrong with them, um, if you go lake swimming and whatnot like that, be aware that this algae is starting to come around in Montana, which can affect your water supplies. So in national news, uh, Actually, this is more about world news or, inter, or interstellar news. Uh, the solar eclipse is coming upon us. It's going to be on August 21st. It's less than two weeks away. I'm excited for it personally. It's going to be on a Monday, the 21st. And the basically, the main point of the eclipse kind of starts at 9.45 and then it kind of gets to its peak around 11. So it's one of the longer eclipses, solar eclipses. Um, but if you're here in Missoula, you're a little bit north of the perfect vantage point for it. So you have to go south in Idaho. Um, and if you're in Portland, just south of Portland, probably about like 10, 20, 30 miles away, something around there, um, you can see the perfect uh, solar eclipse. But be aware that there are a lot of people um, um, getting hotels and all that stuff. And there's a nice little article that I read on NPR about a guy who's seen over 33 solar eclipses in his lifetime. Um, so yeah, that's uh, pretty much happening with your... Uh, um, events, I'm um, not events, uh, but the news that's happening in and around the world. I have some new programs for you guys to enjoy. I got Look Before You Speak, which uh, features a new artist from the E3 Convergence Gallery, but um, also there's um, a couple MAM artist talks um, from the Missoula Art Museum. You got the history of smoke jumper um, when in terms of the first female smoke jumper. That's going to be on MCAT this weekend and also becoming a community. So without further ado, here's all the new programs that are going to be on MCAT. And when I return, I'm going to talk about a lot of MCAT news and some fair stuff as well as MCAT is getting a little bit involved with the fair this year. Basically, what our country was originally established as is a country for everyone and how we can't just turn our backs on people because we're scared. And um, coming from that, from the supposedly Christian perspective, we can say we're a Christian nation. We're supposed to love one another. Um, so, yeah, Statue of Liberty is basically a representation of that, as well as just being the icon for our country. Um, yeah. One of the things I really <clears throat> enjoy about this piece is that, well, there's a lot of things I like about this piece. And, uh, <sighs> You know, it's not your traditional rectangle or square. It's pieced together, and it's like a lot of these things you're piecing together in the news and responding to. And I love the controlled palette that's going on yeah, here. I support what Gail said. And there was a particular missionary group called CAMA, or I don't know, mm, yeah. acronym. And they supplied cloth and thread. Uh, for for the women in the camps and even some men started embroidering because it became a way of making money mm -hmm. and they really needed the money. This is Deanne Shulman. She rookied originally in 1979. 
she was strong enough, she was fit enough, and she was smart enough to get through all the rigorous tests of a jumper back in these guys' time. <laughs> and um, unfortunately, though, um, she couldn't jump that year because of the, you guys probably remember, the height and weight requirement was a lot different back than it is now. So we'll move to the next slide. So back in these guys' salty days, um, you had to be anywhere between five foot five and six foot three, and you had to weigh between 130 and 190 pounds. Deanne Shulman didn't cut that. That's why she didn't get to jump. But she filed a complaint with Equal Employment Opportunity, and it wasn't EEO that changed the rules. Um, I think it came later. It wasn't her filing a complaint with EEO that got her into jumping. It actually happened a couple years later, but she was a single case. And so in 1981, she became the very first female to rookie out of McCall, Idaho, and also the very first female in the United States to uh, rookie as a female. And so 1981, Deanne Shulman paved the way for the rest of us. What kids need from our churches is a safe place to be, free from many of the pressures they face in their school, possibly in their home, and in the world. We need places in our churches where kids are free to share their struggles, their pains, their questions, their doubts, their world, and their lives. A safe place to ask questions, real questions, and work through these answers, work through their struggles and doubts. We need to be aware of reacting against teens in church rather than engaging and getting to know them. I want my teen to be able to go to church and share what her reactions are if she watched 13 Reasons Why, and to be heard, to share what scared or alarmed her, to share if she feels like she might be blamed for someone's suicide, or even to share her sense of hopelessness. Essentially, as a parent, I need the church to be a place that focuses on the person of my child. Hey guys, welcome back. And those are some of the new programs that are happening on MCAT. Here's some social media for you guys. If you want to find out more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. But yeah, yeah, you just have to Google Wake Up Missoula and you get a whole bunch of links to all sorts of things from my website. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, all that stuff. It's wonderful. It's a great way to keep in touch with hap what's happening in Missoula. I go over events. I go over things that are happening in Missoula. I go over programs that MCAT has done for the community. Um, a lot of these programs that we do for the community uh, can be uh, requested by going on to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is a great resource for people in the community to rent um, check out or use the um, the staff that's available to help people produce um, videos, which includes lectures, s um, series of videos, um, my own Look Before You Speak um, video that I produce on MCAT with Steve Glukert, who is the former curator at the Mizzou Art Museum, now retired, but he now hosts a show called Look Before You Speak. You guys can check it out anytime by logging on to MCAT.org. But if you're interested in having a, an event um, recorded that's coming up. You must represent a nonprofit, civic group. Um, but, anyways, um, the whole idea is that you must not represent a group that's there to make money um, unless it's through donations and whatnot. So, anyways, um, you go do How Do I request event recording. You can submit a program. So, if you already have a program already made, you can always submit a program to MCAT and we can air it. So, MCAT is a great uh, resource for a lot of people to kind of let themselves be known and let themselves be a part of the community through this community access television station. So that's a little bit of this and that. Um, MCAT is g has been at the fair. We uh, kicked it off with a nice little live uh, um, stream from our Facebook, YouTube, um, are also from our website as well. But uh, our Facebook usually gets the more views from our MCAT Missoula Community Media Resource uh, page on Facebook. Um, what we did uh, is basically we, we gave a light, nice little introduction to the Missoula Western Montana County Fair, and that's happening at the Missoula Fairgrounds, um, Missoula County Fairgrounds. There's there's a lot of long titles for this, so um, there's a lot of things happening. The fair is basically started last night. Today is the first official day of the fair where people can ride the rides. So starting at 11 a.m. 
the fair is going to start going. Um, me and uh, Johanna Kiampa um, are going to be uh, kind of like guiding you through the fair. We're going to be uh, going to events where you guys uh, don't want to miss, but you guys will have another opportunity to go check it out. We'll try to hit all the events where you can hit the event more than once. And they, uh, But, of course, there's a bunch of other events that will be happening, which I'll get to later in this show during events. So um, also the Boys and Girls Club are here so the boy so MCAT is partnering up with um, Missoula Boys and Girls Club of Missoula County actually it's called M Boys and Girls Club of Missoula County and they're going to be coming here basically from 10 a.m. to 12 ish just about maybe a little bit earlier um, but they're going to be here at MCAT Tuesday through Friday for the next three weeks in August just before school starts so it'll be a great opportunity for kids to get uh, get known with MCAT. We've done some short videos, and um, uh, today we're going to be doing some stop animation for those kids. So, uh, without further ado, I have a new dub and stuff for you guys, and when I come back, we'll talk everything that you guys need to know about what's happening in the city and the Missoula um, County Cemetery. <sighs> you know, this is kind of getting old, you know? Huh? Huh. <laughs> All right, well, whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Got to put my gloves on. Hey, uh, do you think we can get out of here pretty soon? It's getting late. <laughs> you know what? I thought of something funny just recently as I'm watching that guy, you know, crossing the cemetery. Is that, you know, we used to play that game. You know, where, you know, we used to, like, think about what their history was and, like, where <sighs> did they come from. Oh, jeez. No, no, no. Come on. Bear with me. You know, uh, just, you know, make up stories about them like they did in Shaun of the Dead. Remember Shaun of I'm the Dead? I'm not really that interested. You know, where they would just say, you know, fake things. Shut up. This is stupid. Hey, come on. You know, for old time's sake. It is very inconsiderate and very rude. Now, I don't want to hear about it. Let's get to the car. Well, I could always beatbox. I could beatbox instead. <sighs> Beatboxing is stupid. It's really old. A Hit it. Take it away. Go ahead. Okay, bring it back. Sorry about that, sir. I was in the line of the DMV and I got lost. No, wait. I just need to know where to go. Help. I don't know how to express myself. And dramatic turn. Better watch it. I know how to beatbox. Ah, no, no. Yeah, I need help. Help. Oh, this help. Is my glasses. Maybe I can use these on my face. Oh, no. uh, I don't know what to do here. Hoopistank, give me strength. Uh, yeah. yeah. Good thing I got my fighting gloves on. Yeah, you call those fighting gloves. Uh, <laughs> oh, jeez. What a dramatic show off. Yeah, do you know where the DMV is? Uh, sorry about your brother, but you know how it is. <laughs> hey, wait, come back. Get used to this side, the girl's running away from you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know she's probably right. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about some things that are happening with the city of Missoula. So uh, if you haven't already known, I've been covering the uh, Missoula City Cemetery when they're talking about um, updating some things. So they update an ordinance and policy so they're able to sell memorials and help streamline some processes in their cemetery so that uh, people who are grieving and have uh, a lost loved one can basically just kind of go to one place, uh, kind of like a one-stop uh, one stop shop for for them to do any kind of their uh, funeral service shoppings. So that's basically kind of like the motivation behind the city of Missoula, but many other um, for-profit business organizations um, ha have voiced their concerns, including the Missoula City of Commerce, uh, wrote a letter of cease and desist to the city of Missoula that saying that the city of Missoula should not be a business and should not be using taxpayers' money to be used for uh, basically um, personal gain. So anyways, the city finally uh, talks about the final update to the cemetery budget and ordinance update. Uh, if you haven't already heard, some of the folks who run funeral homes and crematories are concerned that if the city goes into the mo memorial business, that it could affect a local business. So after um, times of meetings, um, committee meetings through the uh, 
land use and planning. It's this item is finally put to a public hearing, and this is um, Mary Lou C Cordes, um, Cordes um, and she basically talks about her experience on the cemetery board. I have been on the cemetery board for 40 years because I care for the cemetery and the city of Missoula people. We have tried to work with the monument companies and funeral homes since I started on the board. We've had a few problems which get solved, but now the last few years it doesn't work. They don't want to follow the rules for monuments and we have to keep having to have them come back and redo. You have to have rules or you have chaos, as you know, well know. When the monument companies and the funeral homes do something wrong, the cemetery gets blamed for it. We get complaints and they try to tell the people it's our fault, not theirs. We run the, c the cemetery for the people, not for the monument company or funeral homes. Most of the service in this town are run by Rick Evans and Verton. They own all the funeral homes and Sunset Cemetery. Bob has his own monument company, but if he retires, who knows what will happen. The cemetery has to be set up to take care of the people who come here and need cemetery services. Rick and Bob said they can't follow our rules because it costs people more money. This is not true. We have checked and monuments don't cost extra. That's another reason we should start selling monuments. We don't know what they are charging, but we know that we can keep this affordable for people who don't have a lot of money. Selling monuments is only for the, our cemetery and not for anyone else. People come into our office and expect us to do this. Rick does the same thing at his cemetery, so there should be no difference in our cemetery. One more thing, we are not starting a monu monument business. I'm saying this a second time, we are not starting a monument business. We are going back to doing things the way we used to. We used to pour all the foundations and set stones. I wish we had never stopped doing that ourselves. Since then, it has been a nightmare. These companies come into the cemetery after hours and on weekends when nobody's there to check the work. They don't stop in the office to let us know what they are doing or when they are done. Our board has seen the mistakes. Staff marks these graves so they can't possibly dig wrong, but they do. Sometimes they set foundations in other people's graves or cut off stones to make them fit because they ordered the wrong size. We can do better than this. The people deserve a break in the prices because they pay taxes to the, to run this cemetery. This should be a no-brainer. All right, so um, once again, that was um, Mary Lou uh, Cordes. Um, up next, we got Kim Seeberger uh, uh, on the cemetery board who's actually uh, spoken um, for the most part in a lot of opposition towards uh, a lot of the uh, funeral homes and a lot of people who are complaining about um, the Missoula Cemetery. It's very apparent that the issues continue to occur and in a few cases remain unresolved. The changes that we have proposed are due to this and what we feel is providing the best service for those customers and their families that choose to use Missoula City Cemetery. Our actions up to this point have been based on approval from the City Council and legal review by City Attorney's Office. The fiscal year 17, the cemetery put in a department capital request to purchase a plotter and for training. On this request were other new program considerations that were discussed. Under phase three, it was noted, Plotter opens the potential opportunity for adding a new revenue or source through selling and installing headstones. And here I just want to note that the installing of monuments is a restating of past service while the selling of monuments is a new service and the, it's this for this cemetery only. Aside from the City Council's approval on this request, there have been a number of meetings with the City Attorney's Office who determined that the City Cemetery is within their authority to proceed. We are striving to end the continuing issues that the City Cemetery is not creating nor are responsible for but are getting the blame and to offer affordable yet competitive fair prices to meet the needs of the public service request. We want to provide monument sales and as an affordable option for those people that can't afford the specialty monuments. All right, so that was um, Kim uh, Seeberger, and she continues on to talk about uh, what uh, a lot of this is going on here. There was a presentation beforehand. I suggest that you guys watch it um, before the meeting because this is more of a like the kind of like the uh, statements made after the the uh, little ordinance update and public hearing uh, for this uh, particular item that's going to be updated ordinance and the the public sales of the memorials. So basically what they're trying to do is that the Missoula Cemetery is doing is providing all services through their cemetery which includes an option to buy from their cemetery but if you're looking to buy from uh, the uh, from the Missoula uh, Cemetery from another plot that is a no-go on that. The whole idea is that um, if you're going to um, 
being the Missoula Cemetery, you have the right to buy from anywhere else for a monument, but also uh, they have a better rates for the whole idea is that they want better rates for people to buy monuments within the Missoula Cemetery. But if you're at another plot and be like, hey, I wanna, I'm at this more, this other plot somewhere else, and I want to buy a memorial stone or headstone from the Missoula Cemetery. is like, oh, you can't buy a Missoula headstone from Missoula Cemetery um, if you're not going to be buried in the Missoula Cemetery. So that's kind of how they're kind of thinking it so they don't worry about like disrupting local business. But there's a there's always an issue, and the biggest issue that a lot of things, and I, from what I hear from a lot of the public comments, as soon as the Missoula Cemetery starts selling something, that basically means they become a business. So Ra uh, this is Rachel uh, Parkin. She's an attorney with Garden City Funeral Home and uh, Crematory. Um, she who thinks that the city should support local businesses. In particular, I want to emphasize that the proposed changes here are likely to have a catastrophic impact on my clients and their businesses. Um, the city should be uh, here to support local business and uh, shouldn't be using tax exempt status to force other local businesses out. Um, regardless of what the city cemetery wishes to call it, if the city cemetery is offering monuments for sale and etching those monuments, they are in fact opening a monument shop. Um, I think Ms. Cordes uh, identified the problem when she mentioned that the uh, public deserves a break in price because they are paying for the cemetery. Because the public subsidizes the cemetery, that's exactly why the cemetery um, shouldn't be able to compete. They're using that, that subsidy, that tax exempt status, to drop other prices, for example, the liner fees, and then um, don't are able to um, offer uh, monuments at a lower price as well. So they're using that, that taxpayer subsidy to undercut other tax paying businesses. That's unfair competition. Other states have actually prohibited uh, public cemeteries from doing that for exactly that reason. All right, so um, that was the uh, attorney, um, um, Rachel Perkins. Perkin, sorry, um, and she um, she went on more detail about it, but ultimately suggested that this go back to committee. Um, let's see, I was trying to think of something beforehand, and they uh, mentioned this later on in the com community meeting and when the city council members were asking questions about uh, this and that and about what other uh, examples of uh, places that are tax exempt. Uh, veterans, um, funeral, uh, veterans um, cemeteries and also uh, Catholic cemeteries also tax exempt on that uh, in that matter um, but uh, moving on here is Clinton Burson he's from the Missoula Area Chamber of Commerce who was opposed to this ordinance from the start um, and he has two examples um, that he that he provides for this in his statement and that is we don't believe that the, the government needs to be getting involved in competing with local businesses the private sector is currently serving the market quite well there's competing businesses it's not like there's a monopoly going on and there's absolutely no reason why the cemetery should get involved one of the things that was not presented and to you by the cemetery board but was in their slide and included on sire was the slide entitled monument placement issues if you look at that over the last four years you've actually seen a pretty significant reduction in the number of days that it takes to correct these problems this illustrates a couple of things the first is that there's already a process in place for dealing with these violations so they're told that the work's unacceptable, they have to come out and fix it, they come out and do so. If you look at, at the days that it's taken, four years ago the average was 172 days as of this year, which we're eight months through, it's down to 25 days. That tells me that the monuments dealers that are out there setting the monuments and doing the work have taken the criticism, they've applied it to their work, and they're improving. There's absolutely no justification for them to say the quality of work is awful and it, can, it continues to get worse when their own documents are telling you that it's getting better. So again, the Chamber of Commerce is opposed to the idea of selling monuments. It is selling monuments and it is a monument business. And we would ask that you, you know, at the very least, put this on an even playing field so that the, the local businesses are not being forced to compete unfairly. But more, more, a better solution would be just to eliminate it altogether and say, we'll just keep it the way it is and move forward. All right, so that was um, Clint Burson with the Missoula, uh, Missoula Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, we have a last quote, and this one is from um, Rick Evans. He is the owner of Garden City Funeral Home and Crematoria, along with a, a couple other funeral homes here in town. Um, and he, uh, this is 
um, he talks about some people's woes when it comes to um, buying monuments and whatnot. Revenue lost, you know, we pay taxes. I pay a lot of taxes. We all do. And, and we pay taxes to the city. The city cemetery is, is in the red every single year. Um, so it's just not fair for us to, to have revenue taken away from us, and then we have, still have to pay taxes um, on the revenue that we lost. Um, also, um, as a funeral director and owner of, of the funeral homes in, in Missoula, I don't, I don't push for uh, the city of Missoula or the county of Missoula to help pay for indigent burials. Um, we have absorbed that, and you, it's not in your budget. It could be, because it, eventually something might happen, but it's not in your budget. I absorb that. I take care of all the indigent burials in Missoula. And in another, so here we are um, asking again for revenue to be taken away from us. It's just not fair. Um, all right, so that was uh, um, the owner of Garden City Funeral Homes, uh, Rick Evans. Um, some of the quotes from the past committee meetings were, uh, were that this would make also make these funeral homes let people go as a result of competing businesses. They won't be getting enough revenue to sell, play, pay some of their employees that they have there. Many of the later comments reflect these statements of frustration and the city's inability to meet standards that local businesses have had for many years. Um, not saying one thing over another, but this, act, this uh, item went back to to committee and will be uh, discussed once more on August 30th during the Wednesday committee meetings during the land use and planning. So this is a very uh, long and ongoing process of trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work, what uh, is going to be uh, adapted and try to figure out what's going to be doing moving forward. But a lot of the arguments that you've been hearing so far on my section of your city council report is basically nothing new. This is a lot of the same stuff they've been um, saying beforehand. They got a couple new things here and there, new uh, facts and evidence that they were throwing up in there as well but just so you guys know this is a kind of like an ongoing process but um, from what it seems like the city cemetery wants to kind of do this but everybody else doesn't want them to do that so basically to watch the full meeting you can go to mcat.org you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us um, that is the city of missoula website you can go to the city of missoula you can google them and you can go to the website and you go it, it's just as easily as finding anything on on that website it's a great resource to find upcoming meetings current meetings past meetings and just to kind of figure out what's going on with your city council and how to get involved um, but of course all their public meetings are uh, usually wednesdays for committee meetings uh, all the main public uh, meetings are monday nights at 7 p.m so you guys can check that out um, just log on to ci.missoula.mt.us for your own um, viewing pleasure of your city council. So moving on, um, I got a new art clip for you guys. It's a brand spanking new art clip from the Missoula Art Museum. And I'm definitely excited about this one because it's um, celebrating quilting. And of course, it's uh, Hmong. It's Hmong inspired quilting along with some um, quilts that were made by Hmong uh, people, of course. Um, but without further ado, here is the newest one. And when I come back, I'll talk about all the events that are happening in and around Missoula, especially at the Missoula County Fairgrounds.
Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about events that are happening in and around Missoula. We're starting off with a little thing called Beginning to Intermit Core Align. And this is at the Dickinson Life Learn Long Lifelong Learning Center starting early this morning. Um, of course, they always have these events that happen more than once. And this is for core muscle strength in the beginning level class that allows you to progress at your own pace. You must be familiar with a safe and proper use of the core aligned equipment prior to this class. Uh, prerequisites is an introdu introduction class of a minimum of four or more. Um, there's all sorts of things happen, so it's a core training thing. Um, Junior Chef's Cook-Off Camp is happening for kids age four and up at Taste Buds Kitchen. Um, show off your skills and learn new techniques in what is sure to be the highest highlight of your week, featuring challenges that may be similar to those uh, you're seeing favorite cooking shows, including team challenges, mystery baskets, and in um, individual flavors as they create a culinary treat that are both savory and sweet. So it's all these camps that happen, these are mostly just kind of like day camps. They have a $45 per day camp, and it's mostly just to cover the supplies and some of the teaching as well. It's a pretty good deal for the most part, and then it is a nonprofit group, so a lot of this helps to educate the youth and also adults for other classes as well. Um, Western Montana Fair free admission ribbon cutting ceremony is starting this morning at 10.45 a.m. at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Too bad I'm going to have to miss that one particularly but uh, Missoula County believes that it, as part of the collective heritage, the historic, for, for, historic fair should be accessible to everyone in our community regardless of socioeconomic status. To celebrate the new free administration to the fair, the Missoula County Fairgrounds is hosting a ribbon cutting by the main gate at 10.45 a.m. Please join them for as they commem commemorate this historic moment. Um, Kinetic Sand is happening at Family's First Children's Museum from 11 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Play with unique sand that is fun to touch and easy to shape and mold into all sorts of creations, and it never dries out. That's their slogan. Kids Table at the library. Um, um, Missoula Public Library hosts a daily thing from Monday through Friday, and this is uh, free food for anyone who is age 18 and under, and for every meal that is served, the USDA gives more money to the Missoula Food Bank so they can hire more people. So if you think about it like this, for every five or 10 kids, 18 and under that go eat their free meal at the um, Missoula Public Library or any of these kind of kids table free stuff, another employee can be given. So basically by, ha so you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. This, the, uh, the catch on this free lunch is creating jobs here in Missoula. So it's a great opportunity for anyone who's 18 and under who wants just a free meal and it's great. And it's gonna be at the Missoula Public Library in the large meeting room at 11.30 a.m. Um, you get to hear, so of course, uh, the mayor is going to be up for uh, re-election pretty soon. You can hear a mayoral candidate, Lisa Tripke. She is running um, against uh, Mayor John Engen for the Democratic seat here in Missoula. So they're going to do, uh, mostly it's, uh, the whole idea behind this is that in Missoula, there's, it's very heavily Democratic. So a lot of the election is usually clinched by uh, the summertime because they have, um, all, uh, basically have all these, um, Pre-rec. This is like the de democratic um, representation. They get voted in, and then they vote. Then they have the official election between the Democrat, Republican, Independent, and whatnot. So that's kind of. But here in Missoula, it's mostly about the preliminary stuff, which is when they determine who the Democratic is, and then after that, it's usually like, oh, they're going to win anyway. So that's kind of how it is. It's Missoula. I'm sorry. That's just the way it is. <laughs> Communication practice group. I don't want to get into any uh, too many pol social, political kind of things, but you know, it's Missoula. If you don't know Missoula, wake up, <laughs> Missoula. Um, Communication practice group. Uh, um, Jeanette Rankin Peace Center is doing a compassionate um, communication practice group. It's open to all ages, no ex experience necessary. It's free. It's also known as nonviolent communication. It's from 12 to 1 p.m. You, you're more than welcome to bring a lunch. Um, and it's facilitated by Patrick Marcel. So you figure out ways to communicate with people using nonviolence and figuring out ways to communicate with each other. Windows 10, um, as if uh, communicating couldn't get any worse. Um, and most people cannot stand uh, Windows. Windows 10 is a very interesting operating system. Topics can include basic orientation, and then doing a class at the Missoula Public Library at 12.30 p.m. You can manage via configuring system settings and navigate the internet with a Microsoft Edge browser. Registration is required by calling 721-BOOK, otherwise known as 721-2665. And this is happening in the computer classroom. Keith Raymond Magic Show. Um, we're going to be covering this on Thursday, but um, Keith, Mag Keith Raymond Magic Show is going to be happening pretty much every single day, uh, starting today, um, and at 1 and 3 p.m. 
two different shows, and this is going to be at the Stampede Stage. So the Stampede Stage is behind the security office on the west entrance gate, basically the main entrance if you uh, go through the... Uh, the parking lot and go down there and buy the American flag and all that stuff. You can basically kind of like go past there, take a hard left onto a nice little grassy lawn, and they'll have a uh, and they'll have a nice little magic show. And that starts at 1 p.m. And also, if you missed that one, you can go to the th one at 3 p.m. But then again, it's going to be happening pretty much every single day this week up until the weekend. They have a kitty rodeo at the Missoula Fairgrounds starting at 2 p.m. Kitty rodeo with the uh, Missoula Stampede Rodeo. Kitty rodeo includes Bucky the Stick Horse. Bucky and the Stick Horses, um, and that's happening at 2 p.m. International Food Competition is happening at 3 p.m. at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Bring your foods from around the world, items such as German potato salad, um, Italian salad. It's sponsored by uh, Heaven's Hidden Treasures. Pre-registration pre is not required for participants. Bring your food item on that day. So we think of it as a um, potluck that you can win a, oh, an award for. So this, uh, so there's some events that need a pre-registration for the fair. This one does not. You just bring your food. So if you want to get started now, would be a good time to get started. You bring it there and you get a, maybe get a blue ribbon. Hooray! Um, and that is basically happening at 3 p.m. at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Um, High Country Cowboys is going to be at the Missoula Fairgrounds as well on the Stampede Stage after the Magic Show. And this is at 5.30 and 9 p.m. tonight. Uh, me and um, Johanna will be covering this. We'll be covering a couple other things around the fair, including some rides and stuff like that. But we're going to be live streaming from um, the Stampede Stage around 5 o'clock, so you guys can check that out. Um, you got Doc Diving Dogs at the Missoula Fairgrounds. Uh, so um, if you like those dogs that like to jump long distances into pools, that is the place to be, and that's going to be at the south entrance side. They usually do that, and they ha oh, it looks like it's going to say on the west lawn from 6 to um, 7 p.m., and it's cost uh, $10 per jump or $50 for the day jump pass, including unlimited jumps. And it's a dog diving thing, and it'll have the all-star dogs the next day, which we'll be covering as well. So the Missoula uh, City Band Concert Series is going to be at Bonner Park Bomb sh uh, Band Shell. Bomb Shell. Pfft. Um, city, uh, the city band featuring Missoula's cutest couple, um, Kaylin Sizzler and um, Je um, Jesse Doshnell, Doshnell, um karaoke at, okay, so and that's going to happen at the Missoula Bonner Park at 8 p.m. It's a great resource. MCAT usually films it. It's going to be wonderful. Um, and then a karaoke at the Bandlander, Eagles Lodge, and Sunrise Saloon. So those are all your karaoke's happening for your Thursday. I have an art clip for you guys, and then I'll come back for all your Thursday events right after this. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to Rick Phillips, um, employee here at MCAT, who um, kind of gives you a nice little highlight of all the new art that's happening in and around Missoula, and that's going to be at the Missoula Art Museum. So here are your Thursday uh, events starting at 8.30 a.m. tomorrow morning is Excel Level 2. So if you uh, think you're good at Excel, Excel, Microsoft Excel um, Level 2 is just for you. And this is going to be at formatting and functions at the Dickinson Lifelong Learning Center. This course will expand upon beginning level foundation of an in-depth look at advanced formatting themes, cell styles, customizing page, setup, date, and time functions, coordination, formatting, advanced functions, for text, and, and now, 
uh, anal uh, analysis. If criteria, troubleshooting formulas, lookup functions, and outline features, this course will use Office 2016. Ooh, and um, essential skills learned will apply to Office 2013, 10, and 07. Excel Level One or uh, equivalent skills are prerequisites for this, um, so you can't fake it. Um, <laughs> Five Valley Gladius show is uh, going to be at the Missoula Fairgrounds starting at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning. The show is a co-sponsor with Five Valley Dahlia and Glad Society with the Western Montana State Fair. Exhibitors from Western Montana and Five Valley. Oh, God, it just repeats over and over again. Um, and blah, 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 you know, entries accepted from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Thursday, August 10th. Judges will be conducting an accredited NAGEC judges and student judges. The show closes Friday. August 11th. So this is going to be the Five Valleys Gladius, uh, Gladius show. Oh, God. <laughs> I think it just like says it a bunch of times, but it doesn't really describe what the show is really about. And I, I'm just going to move on. Brewery tour number three with Montana Adventure Shuttle. Um, the Montana Adventure Shuttle basically shuttles a whole bunch of people around. They're going to start with Lolo Peak Brewing, north, then go to Northside Kettle House, and then Tamarack Brewing. Food is available at Lolo Peak and Tamarack for lunch or midday snack. Um, it starts at 10.45 a.m. It will get you in a group to Lolo Peak Brewing Company for the opening at 11 a.m. and lunchtime. And from there, they will travel to Northside Kettle House and finally to Tamarack Brewery in downtown Missoula. So... Basically, you meet at Silver Park, or you call for pickup arrangements, and you basically get on the bus, go, and then you go on a pub tour, basically. Um, the fee is $43 per person, including first beer. Um, contact to reserve a seat, and this is only nine uh, available, so there's max seating is 11, so they'll have pretty much two people watching you guys. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of what's happening there. I think that would be interesting for those of you who like to enjoy a nice day of just going out and going around and being safe and being responsible. Um, Missoula Stampede Parade, Missoula Fairgrounds. Um, this is going to be the S Missoula Stampede Royalty Parade, and that starts at 12 tomorrow morning. Canine Stars, as I was talking about, is something that I'm excited to cover with Johanna tomorrow at 1 p.m. The Canine Stars uh, Stunt Dog Show is an exciting extreme sports production for family entertainment, highlighting popular dog sports with such as dock diving, freestyle frisbee disc, uh, fly ball racing, high jumping, and dogs agility to uh, multiple breeds of dogs and mixes who have been rescued or adopted from shelters. Uh, you can visit their website at thecaninestars.com for more information. And they'll be at the West Lawn at 1 p.m., 4 p.m., and 7 p.m. We'll cover it, and you guys will go to a little a taste of what you guys can see, but it's going to be going on pretty much all week long. Missoula Stampede Royalty Style Show and Speeches. So Style Show on Speeches will be on the Stampede stage in Missoula Stampede uh, Royalty Contestants. It's kind of like a beauty contest, but a little more rural. rural, um, And that's going to be happening uh, starting at 2 p.m. And then have speeches interviews to follow at 3.30 p.m. And there's any type of sandwich competition at the Missoula Fairgrounds. The culinary is doing some more stuff as well. So you can bring any type of sandwich for the competition. Win a blue ribbon for making a sandwich. And pre-registration is not required. Same old deal. Grand prize winners for the week on Sunday following the chocolate competition. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about the chocolate competition on Friday's show. Downtown tonight in Karis Park. Um, that's happening, and it's going to be music by Ryan um, Criers and the Rough Cuts and children activities provided by the Zootown Arts Community um, Center, which will probably do face painting. Um, downtown tonight happens every Thursday night in June, July, and August from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. in the Karis Park, downtown Missoula, and it's free to attend. Everything else is cost money, like food and whatever. Uh, but, yeah, it's going to be great. Um, Shakewell is going to be at the Missoula County Fairgrounds at 5.30 p.m. They'll be pr performing on the Stampede stage at 5.30 p.m. and... At 9 p.m., MCT's Pack the World of Broadway. I'm going to end the event show with this last thing from MCT. They invited, uh, they casted, uh, so approximately uh, 65,000 kids uh, from all over the world applied for this, and only 200 kids were chosen to perform this year at the uh, world at the stage at MCT here in Missoula, and they're going to be uh, performing um, this thir Thursday at 8 p.m. Um, and then they're also going to be performing Saturday the 10th, August 12th, at the MCT Center for Performing Arts. The world of Broadway will take audiences across the globe visiting well-known musicians that unfolded in countries from around the world, inclu including Russia and Vietnam. The showcase 
and is, is the culmination of the two weeks of intensive instruction under the guidance of MCT's creative staff. The campers spend 10 days in Flathead Lake rehearsing, learning music, dance steps, and auditioning for solo spots in this production. The day before the showcase opens, the cast returns to Missoula to stage the show at the MCT Center for Performing Arts. So you might see them up and around the area today and tomorrow at the Missoula Fairgrounds or even at Karis Park, kind of showing off their skills. Maybe they'll do some uh, flash mobbing, who knows? Uh, it's not really called a flash mob if you know it's gonna happen. Uh, the Missoula uh, Children's Theater is delighted that this is the largest group in the 39 years of performing arts camp history. It's quite thrilling to see the skilled young performers uh, commanding the MCT stage. The world of Broadway awaits you. So I think that would be fun. It's going to be great, um, but here are some of your late night events. If you guys um, want to stay up and go out late tomorrow night, uh, you got live jazz at Plonk. You got rock and karaoke at Dark Horse. You got karaoke at VFW. And local Creek Band is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon playing some country music. And then finally, at the Top Hat Lounge, it's going to be rock music by the Misfortune Tellers. So that's basically everything that you need to know about what's happening in terms of your events. Oof, I feel long-winded. I talk so much about this. There's so much going on because it's the Missoula County Fair Week. And this Friday, I'll talk more about what's happening at the fair and what's happening in and around Missoula because there's a lot happening this week and this weekend. And I hope you guys uh, limit your time outside because you're going to deal with moderate smoky conditions. But it's not going to be too intense. But there was some intensity because I had a kid in one of my summer camps who has asthma. And so she couldn't come for the first day of one of our camps because the smoke was that bad. But this week, it doesn't seem like the smoke's going to get too bad. It's going to stay fairly moderate. So hopefully we'll be able to enjoy some outdoor sunshine, um, limited amount of smoke. But most of all, enjoy the rest of this week at, for the Mis Western Montana County Fair. So um, thank you guys for joining me. If you want to learn more information, you can go on to my website by going on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made it to write it out all twice. You can always Google me at Wake Up Missoula or Scott Ramp. You can also find me on f YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter all with the keyword Wake Up Missoula. Be sure to find and follow MCAT, um, Missoula's community media resource by going on to mcat.org and you can find out all our links and resources through here as well. You can always request an upcoming event for you guys. But without further ado, I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning and I want to thank Neil for providing my new logo. Wake up Missoula. Isn't it beautiful? I think it's quite beautiful. Um, I want to thank Neil Wells. Uh, he is one of the teen, uh, one of the dream teens that come to MCAT and he is Oh, amazing with Photoshop. And he also made the cover for our um, Dead Tired, which is now available on MCAT. So you can watch it anytime for our Zombie Camp. It's our Zombie Camp movie. And I hope you guys have a great week. And you guys um, have, a, 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 have some time outside. But be aware that there's smoke outside. So you might want to limit some time outside. Just because it's moderate doesn't mean it can't harm you. So um, Enjoy this uh, smoky rest of your week, and we're going to have some smoke throughout the rest of the summer, basically. But luckily, the summer's almost over. Um, not necessarily for people who like summer, so I don't know. I, I really, you really can't please anybody, so I'll please you guys by ending the show right now. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and thanks for joining me. <laughs>